Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. Today we are in Masaka and we are meeting a brother and sister who ventured into farming during the COVID lockdown. A sign of our times. Uh, Agi, stop. Stop what? The sign. What sign? Come on, Fob, let's go. Ah. Today we're in Masaka, a sign of the COVID lockdown, blah, 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 blah. You're Did the you one who's saying the sign. The sign, sign but I, I, meant, I meant that uh. sign. <laughs> Hello, Stevie. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. We are in Bukalasa village in Masaka, and today our farmers are Juliet Nakalemba and her brother Stephen Seka Naboke. Juliet is a writer and a secretary, and Stephen used to work in electronics until COVID struck. Oh, over the moon, what's up? Hey, I've seen Julia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a writer, so I'm a good reader. So once I read a book for farming, mainly coffee, so I fell in love with coffee farming. And so when we came here in, during the COVID era, we were dormant. So we asked our dad to give us part of his land so that we can start farming coffee. He showed us the land. The next day we had to clear. <laughs> to start the farming. The family has six acres of land and their father has given them four acres for their projects. Farming is in the blood of the siblings, but now they want to go commercial. They have planted 1,000 coffee trees together. Juliet wants to start a piggery. And Stephen is passionate about passion fruit and has two plantations. Juliet finances the project and Stephen manages the farm, but it's not as easy as it sounds. I have a lot of work to do here. I find myself, I have to craft after that, the pig and the coffee and the passion fruits. So, it's a little... It's tiresome. It's tiresome. And the laborers, we get some of them are unprofessional. Sometimes I, I find myself living in the working town, I come and to help him. <laughs> no, this is my younger bro. I've always been there to get him on the hand. You come and go. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet and Stephen planted their first coffee in September 2020. Then eight months later, they expanded and they now have 1,000 coffee trees. And since they love coffee farming so much, we brought in our expert Andrew Magombe of Cafe Africa to see if our young farmers can improve on their plantation. The few things that need to be done are the opening up of the canopy. If you leave it to grow while it is together, there will be a lot of pests and disease. So we need to do the opening up of the canopy to allow in light penetration. And once you have opened up the canopy, it will also allow flowers to get adequate light and therefore the fruits will be on. So if that is done, really, there's a lot of potential in this good coffee. But you have done a good job, really. When you look around, the coffee is as shining as the, the two people themselves, <laughs> young people. That's the most impressive thing. <laughs> That's a compliment. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when we are doing the canopy opening, yeah. we get a stick that we are going to use for separating the coffee. Okay. So, we cut a stick and several strips of banana fibers, and we are ready to proceed. This coffee is closed, okay? Mm, yeah. And there's no light penetration, so we need to open it mm. so that they can be light coming in, and this is how we do. This. This. Yeah. Then we bring this. This take. And put it this here. And that. So far you are going to tie with the banana fiber oh, here. Stephen, you can hope. Yeah. Tie it. Yes, tie. You tie harder. You don't open too much. It's just to allow the light, you know, light can penetration. Mm. And when do you remove this stick? If you left it for three weeks, 
to one month, the coffee will have already got used mm. to that kind of thing. If you delay to open up the canopy, mm. you also delay to harvest. Do you know why? Mm -mm. Your coffee was struggling to get light. Mm. You see here, mm. this, it should have flowered early, but because the, the canopy was closed, mm. it concentrates on looking for light first. And it goes up, look for light, it delays to flower. There is this opening of the canopy and bending to induce the production of new suckers. Mm -hmm. Isn't that in, in injustice to the plant? The, the first opening mm. was to induce new suckers. So yeah. that instead of one tree, you get like four, three to four. Mm. It means you are preparing for more yield. But those stems or suckers, if you don't open them up, they will again congest and start competing for light mm. eh? and harbor insect pests and diseases. So the two practices are important. One, after you have planted and it's about knee high or two months from planting, bend it to induce more suckers. Mm. Then after inducing more suckers, start the practice of opening up to prevent pests, pests and, and diseases. diseases. Then to speed up the flowering Flying, mm. and also allow light to penetrate. to penetration to reach the flowers. I get so it that now. There's no the coffee is really <laughs> smiling actually. <laughs> <laughs> and now, on to the younger coffee plantation. Now, this tree stump needs to be removed because whenever you cut a tree and uh, there's a stump, it can cause your coffee tree to dry. Because mm. there's a fungus, a disease that feeds on the sugars that are in the, mm. in the roots. Mm. And when the roots of the drying tree mm. connect with the coffee trees, mm. so the fungi will remove and dry the coffee. Wherever there are these stumps, you mm. dig them out mm. and those roots. Mm. That so that avocado tree mm. needs to be removed because it's among the trees that host the mm. black of trig borer, which is a, a serious pest for robusta coffee. We're going to work on that. And by the way, you can see it is even unproductive. <laughs> the, the fruiting it is old. Eh? Yeah, sure. yeah. And after removing it, just like we said for the other tree stumps, mm. uproot it. Mm. Because as the tree stump, if left it, uh, as it is rotting, mm. it might be a source of infection. To this. to this, there's that fungal disease called Ameralia, which might dry your coffee. Mm. So that needs to be done and you'll get your okay. coffee tree right. Mm. If you do this mm. and those practices we have talked about, mm. then really your coffee garden will be very yeah. good. I'm happy to hear that because we are working to get money, not so. <laughs> we are working to get money. We, are, we have always been injecting money now almost in one and a half years. So we are expecting to get money. We are looking up to that. For the areas he has talked about that need to change, right away we are going to do it. We already have work, we have already planned it, how to do it. Juliet wants to start a piggery and she has a pig which recently gave birth to eight piglets. It's a start, but a piggery bang in the middle of an outbreak of swine fever? Hmm, I don't know. I'm a pork eater and he's one. <laughs> Four months now, no pork home. We don't bring pork home. Even if you like it much, you, we don't allow <laughs> eating pork here. Up to now, we are still scared. Not it did, but we are. And they are right to be scared. So we brought in an expert, Richard Lumu, of the National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, to see if he can advise our farmers on how to better protect their pigs. Swine fever is a viral infection. Once it gets into your farm, mm. uh, there's no any other remedy, apart from maybe sorting the pigs and then... What should be done uh -huh. to, to avoid it? To avoid it, actually, uh, there are a number of measures which you have to put into consideration. Mm -hmm. You need to put a fence around mm -hmm. and then you're supposed to fill the gaps in between here so that the piglets cannot go out, mm -hmm. so that you can stop uh, wild animals like foxes and dogs, mm -hmm. which can come from infested areas mm -hmm. and then come and come in touch with your animals. Mm -hmm. okay. Secondly, we need to have a foot bath where we're supposed to, to, to dip our feet mm, before, coming, before, before coming in. But you have to use a suitable disinfectant. Mm. We have quite a number of them on the market. Mm -hmm. We have things like uh, Noroclins, mm -hmm. we have Biosafe, eh? mm -hmm. we have Quebec. Mm -hmm. And then uh, those disinfectants have got a pulling ability. Mm. Once you put your feet like this, they have a pulling ability to pull all the virus Ooh. that you have come with Ooh. on your clothes and then, yes, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and uh, when, when you don't trust the, the source where you have come from, yes. maybe you have come from other farm visits, yeah. before you, you come in, you need to first take a bath. Mm. 
and right? change. And change, yes. Oh, okay. And at farm level, whoever is taking care of the animals, mm. it's supposed to take care not to eat pork anywhere. If, like a stockman, if goes out and then takes pork, yes. which is infected, yes. and then comes back to the unit, the chances of getting these animals infected yes. are very high in that these viruses form what you call cysts. So even if you wash your hands, oh. Eh, oh, it sticks. yeah, it okay. sticks. Eh? Ah. Uh, but at times you don't brush after eating pork. Exactly. Uh, when you come here, you can spit accidentally, oh, right? Yes. Eh? Yes, yes, and then yes, when you spit, the viruses will have to come oh, in touch. Oh. Uh, you have to be very careful. For another problem, you are not yeah. supposed to feed your animals with swill. We call it swill because this is cooked food, maybe from restaurants, because uh, it can be a very big source. And uh, once they feed on cooked food, uh, their droppings smell a lot and attract flies, and these flies can be an entry point, right? Yeah. So what yes. do we have to? Add what do you have to add? That? Yes. Uh, like in maize, <laughs> what you have, can do is to 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 break it, mm. we call it broken maize, okay. yes. and then that would be just one ingredient, all right? Mm. And then you need to add in proteins. You can put in soya. You can put in cotton seed cake. You can also use these other concentrated feeds like a macro mix. Uh, it has got calcium in it, it has got proteins, mm. and then you just add it. Normally we make uh, uh, a formula, you use it 5, five kilograms of that uh, macro mix. You put in 20 kilograms of soya, uh, and then uh, we put in 20 kilograms of uh, broken maize, mm -hmm. and then uh, you put in like a 20 kilograms of maize bran. Okay, yes, okay. and then yep. you make a complete diet. Mm. Get rid of this mm. if you want to make a fortune out of it, right? Mm. You use the concentrated feeds mm. so that you can benefit. Because I know your goal is you want to move from one step to another, right? <laughs> mm? All of yeah. Indeed. You want to go commercial, yeah. right? But yeah. this is a starting point. Mm. But first things first. We need to improve on the roof of the piggery and protect the piglets from wild animals. Caris is not one to waste time, of course. Oh! Caris is already working on the piggery. <laughs> At least he'll leave us alone after the break. <laughs> I know, Caris. We'll see about that. After the break. in Bukala, sir, in Masaka, and we are visiting Juliet Nakalemba and her brother Stephen Chiseka Naboke. We've seen how to manage their young coffee plantation and advise them on how to protect their pigs from swine fever. We are now going to see Stephen's passion fruits and help Juliet get a return on her investment. Stephen loves passion fruits. It brings in good money. But his orchard of 280 trees hasn't been doing so well. He will have to uproot it. For our expert from Naro, Dr. Godfrey Seruwu, yes, the loss is caused by pests and diseases, but there's been an even bigger problem. From the look of fruits, there is this lack of moisture. It needed water. In passion fruit production, you cannot produce quality passion fruit unless you have water. We had a, a, a long drought last, last year, mm. so. And uh, it succumbed to the drought. Yes. However, exactly. much as we had the drought, there is something you can do mm. to salvage the crop without a lot of investment. Without an irrigation system, there are simple, simple things you can do mm. to make the crop survive. That is use of water bottles. Very many people despise that system, but it really works. You know the mineral water bottles? Yes. You would find a way of putting it so that it drips. You can put in fresh water after every three days. That one and a half liters every three days is enough to keep your crop. Good. That's something new we are learning. Because yeah. had we known that earlier, mm -hmm. maybe we could have saved this. Yeah. Now, with this, at, in the top, the cover, mm. You put holes mm. depending on yeah, how fast safe. you want the water to move. Wow. If you don't put a hole on top, the water will not come out. Okay. So you need to perforate it at the mm. top 
then fix it in the soil like that. If you have one hole, it will release slowly. <coughs> if you have more, then it moves very fast. Mm. But in this system, you need to mulch so that the little water that goes into the soil is not uh, evaporating. Mm. Mm. Doctor, can this be saved? Or? Yeah, from the way the crop looks, mm. it has gone beyond the stage where you can save it. Sure. Mm. What you have to do now mm. is to completely remove the entire plantation mm. so that it is not a source of pests and mm. diseases. If we are to replace the same plant here, the mm. passion fruit, how long can we take? You remove this, mm. you don't want to plant a crop within the same family. Mm. You plant maize or beans for mm. one season, mm. yes. so that breaks off the disease and pest cycle, mm. then you can come in again with the... But now, you, what you have to do, you collect all these, put it in one place and probably burn it mm. <coughs> to get rid of all the pests and diseases. But Stephen still thinks passion fruit is the way to go. And he has rented half an acre a kilometer away from home and planted passion fruits. This time, Dr. Godfrey is impressed by what he sees here. The crop looks good and it has been traced very well. Yeah. Within less than six months, it's fruiting. And when you look at the pest control, the disease control, mm. it's well done. And now here the crop looks so good yet we are in a dry season. What have you been doing? Secret. Uh, doctor, since we are near water source, mm. I have been irrigating. Yeah. And, and just of recent, received rain. Mm. So. However, now once it goes up to the net, yes. we don't want it to be overcrowded. Mm. You have to select the good branches to leave mm. so that it spreads. It needs a lot of light. We need every branch to be exposed to the light. So at some point you may need to remove the excess branches yeah, and leave it to grow properly. You have to look out for the branches that are... Uh, sometimes the dead leaves. Uh, the, 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 the dead it, branches, it. Oh. the dead leaves, you have to clean them. But once you remove them, don't throw them within the field. Mm. Make sure they are taken out of the field. Why not? I, I thought I, I should have used the uh, leaves for mm. mulching and uh, branches. They may have harbor some diseases or pests. Mm. And once you put them here, they may affect the upcoming young branches. So. It's better you take them out mm. and come in with proper mulching. We can use dry grass okay. and we cover the root region. But when covering, you must leave between half a foot to a foot from the plant without covering it. Mm. Because if you cover up to the plant, the ease of pests moving in is very quick. But once you leave that space, the pests find it a problem to move. So you cover but leaving a ring of around one foot from the plant. I was so excited with his comments about my new project and I'm looking forward to put everything he told me into practice. Mm. And actually I want to start to, to start a nursery. And people come and buy from us. From, from us. Juliet is a published author. She has written four novels and has already published one. But when she and Stephen ventured into farming, she used all her savings on their project. In farming, getting a return on investment is no mean task. It takes time and above all, systematic bookkeeping. Juliet has kept records of their expenses and it's a good thing. But for our agriculture officer, Henry Kawesi, there's a method and an art to efficient accounting and he is here to show our young farmers the basics of bookkeeping. Going back to class. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are adult classes. Adult eh? We classes. don't need so Literacy much. Learning. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so when it comes to the actual record, like they were recording, which is very good, this one is very handy because it is much simpler and able to be kept by any farmer. We call it a cash book. Now we have here columns. We have the cash in, then the cash out. Yes. 
let's say if you have two million that we have set aside as mm -hmm. the beginning capital capital yes this is what we put in here okay then when we begin spending yes. you come here you leave this and then cash you out. put it oh, under cash out okay if i started with two million yes. i bought seedlings of seven hundred thousand what's so the balance yes balance. Then was the price as expected or higher? This is what you put yeah. under the yeah. remarks here. Yeah. Then you go on, and it is very important that you maintain it on a monthly basis. At the end of the month, you add out how much have you spent, how much was in, what is the balance. Yes. So you are able to tell when and where you do spend the cash because you may not have to have all the cash at once in order to start the business mm. but you may find that you need cash at the start you need cash after three months you need cash after four months something like that so this is this will be very handy for any farmer not only Juliet and the steven but any any commercial oriented farmer yeah we have questions when we are harvesting our first Passion fruit here. We used mm. to get it uh, every Monday. Mm. But you may find sometimes sometimes we had not planned to maybe to apply fertilizer. It becomes yes. very, very more disturbing like yes, our, yes, how we had yes. planned and what. Thank you so much. Still we go back to our record. Because mm. this is a cash book. We are recording what mm. you are spending money on and what you are receiving money on. Okay. For example, we have sold two bags of passion fruit. Yes. So we come here, eighth. We have sold two bags of passion fruit here. Okay. Is that cash in, cash out? Cash in. That is cash in. So we put it here as cash in. Mm. Then on the same day, we may buy fertilizer. Oh, we may yes. buy insecticide. Mm. Again, you come here. Eighth, particulars. Mm. Bought one bag of fertilizer, mm. NPK, whatever it is. You have mm. to describe what you have bought. Yes. Is that cash in, cash out? Cash out. out. Cash out. But you may find that the actual and the mm. plant may differ. Defer. That is quite fine because you have the records. Yes. When do you need the fertilizer at flowering, at harvesting, at whatever stages? So that's how we use the records. Yes. But I think mm -hmm. has also asked on the remarks. The remarks. Which, oh. which comes in as in? The remarks. Now here is where you gave an example that here are some costs that were not expected. So you may put it here. We bought two bags of fertilizer. Yet we anticipated to use we one. We had anticipated to use one. one bag. So it helps now in the future when you are planning to get to know, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this for my enterprise. Suppose I have more than one project on my farm. Yes, it is. Uh, can I put them on the, on, the, on, the same, on, the, on, the, on the same book? Once you put them together, that will be total confusion. <laughs> because here is where we are looking, even if you have 10 enterprises, have separate books for those different enterprises Each. because oh. they are different enterprises. We are keeping records because you may have 10 enterprises, enterprises. seven of them may be non-profitable. Okay, yes. So how will you find out if you are mixing them together? Oh. So you have to keep one for pig, one for coffee, one for passion fruit. Because it will help you in the decision making yes. for you to say, no, I have to inject more money in the coffee because it brings in more profit than the passion fruit or the other enterprises. Yes. We are very impressed. I like the cash book. We are very impressed. In the way we are doing it, we, did, we had done some of it, but it was unprofessional. But what he did here, that demonstration, all of the things he's done, he, did, he showed to us, something that can lift us up. This is something that you can follow and it's the uh, easy steps, I think. Caris has finished the makeover of the pig's tie. Yes, boss. How do you like this? Ah, the huh? press is good. It's good. It looks good. It's more secure. Yeah, indeed, very, very, very indeed secure. it is. Are they all in? Towards to outside. Where are they? Where yeah, are they? they? It's time to bring in the piglets. Whoa, <laughs> you need to be seriously athletic for this. How about you go the other side? Go for it, Frob. Me? I just hope Juliet and Steven will continue farming with the same enthusiasm. <laughs> I want to be that farmer whom people consult. And I'm looking forward to do my level best to keep this going. My plan is getting at least 20 acres. I get it, I say bye bye to town people. I'll come on my farm, I can do my writing with the farming. It's being free. For now we are half free, I want to be free. <laughs> Take 
Our work here is done, but we are not leaving yet. We want to hear Juliet's COVID poem. COVID won't stop me. She started farming acres of coffee. Coffee won't stop me. She said she started farming acres of coffee and hundreds of chicken, yo. Stop sobbing and start doing. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of here. We're quite busy, yo. And we'll see you in the next Shamba Shepherd, Uganda. You heard? <laughs>